I'm going to show you how we built out a completely automated scraper that pulls jobs from Google um, and writes all the emails for you and then reaches out to them. Um, and we have this on a schedule so that it pulls the data every single week for any of the previous seven days, the jobs that have been posted. And then it pushes it through an entire workflow and then spits out the email and then pushes it into your email sequencer. Um, and it does that all automatically. Um, and all you have to do is quite literally just add the leads every single week. Um, but that happens automatically. You don't actually have to add them. You know, the tech in the background is running for you and that's doing it for you. Um, now I've built a very, very similar workflow like very recently and I did a video of it. So I'm just doing another video that's relatively similar. That was with LinkedIn. This is now with Google instead. Um, I'm going to show you how this works on the clay side of things. So we start off here pulling the data from Appify. Um, again, this is all very similar to what I've shown before. The only main difference here is we're pulling it from Google instead, as opposed to from LinkedIn. Um, and the reason for that is just you get more access to more jobs. Um, Google pulls the jobs from not just LinkedIn, but it also pulls the jobs from, you know, career sites, Indeed, Read, like all of these different, you can see job source link. Uh, let me just change this to the actual like, URL. And you can see here that this is actually all of the jobs. This is LinkedIn, it's like workable. Most of them are from LinkedIn, but there are also a couple of other ones. This has already got a filter on it as well. So the reason for doing it from here is again, just because it allows you to pull in jobs from not just from one place, but from multiple, multiple different places. So you actually get more access to more jobs. <clears throat> and you can see here, this is pulling all the data basically from the past uh, seven days. So any jobs that have been posted within the past seven days, some of them, if it says here, like hace 25 días, so since 25 days, um, the reason why is because sometimes it updates, updates the job, right? So the job was posted 24 days ago, but it's had an update within the past seven days. So that's why it sometimes does that. Um, so yeah, you kind of get a sense of, of how that looks like. And that's why, again, we use Google instead of LinkedIn in this set, in this scenario, but it's very similar to what we had before. So pull the job description, pull the job role link, pull the job title, the, the what they're hiring for the company, the location of where the job is. Then what we're doing, because some of them don't have, and this is a little bit different to LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, you're able to, with scrapers, to pull uh, the company information from the company page. Whereas on Google, it doesn't always show up. So what you need to do a lot of the time is go find domain from company. So um, running it through clear bit here is free, but running it on Google costs uh, a credit. So what it'll do is just, it'll try and find the domain and all you need is the company name. So it'll try and find the company name uh, on clear bit. And then if it can't find it on clear bit, it'll find it on Google. So then you have the domain here. What I would say though, is you want to maybe have a bit of a filter here because sometimes it doesn't always work too well. So you can see here, this is click jobs. We don't want to reach out to click jobs specifically because we're not actually like click jobs is not the one that's hiring for the job they're the job board um or they're the, the i think they're a recruitment agency or something i don't know how they work but um so that would probably be an area that we would actually just improve and filter out a little bit more but um yeah and the next thing you want to do is you want to uh, grab their linkedin profiles the reason why is normally um with their linkedin profiles it's just got a little bit higher degree of accuracy when you're searching for the company like the the contacts of the company and you can also pull the description which is really important um the reason why the description is important is just because then we can actually filter out for any recruitment companies as well and we also get the employee count too so we want to pull out the employee count so that we can filter it if that's important for your icp and we can also filter out any recruitment companies because we'll be able to pull the industry and the description, um, which means then we can provide the scoring, which is what we do here. So we do the scoring. Um, so we'll essentially score the description for anything that has like recruitment, all of these kinds of words in there. Um, so, you know, sometimes with recruitment, they will put themselves as a software development company, but they're a recruitment company. Um, but in the description, they'll usually nine times out of 10 put recruiting, staffing, anything along those lines. Um, so that's why we score the row and use score row function as opposed to like using AI to do it. And then if they're a good fit and everything they're filtered, then they'll push into the next table. Again, I would actually go back and I would change a couple of bits in this table to optimize it. So you can see here, there's a few that are like click jobs. I would have a conditional that basically says um, anything that is click jobs or any of the ones, any of the websites that maybe you kind of know to pull out, I would remove those. And that's how I would do it. And then this pushes into a find people table um which 
yeah, you can see the find people table here, um, which will basically pull the you know person's details. We'll find the decision makers. So the decision makers are basically like talent acquisition. Um, in this case, if we are hiring for, we're looking at director jobs. Um, we will try and pull, you know, yeah, this is like the HR, head of HR, talent acquisition, things like that. Those the people that are normally nine times out of ten responsible for hiring. Um, and then we'll map job role length, company, all that kind of stuff. And we don't do any enrichment until uh, at a people level, until we've obviously got their email addresses. So we'll do a workflow, uh, a waterfall, sorry, where we do Prospio, then we do lead magic, um, and then we do ICPs. And we also, um, so th this is sort of the main waterfall that we'll start using now. Um, we've got APIs to all these uh, as well, so it makes it cheaper and you don't have to use any clay credits. So still up until this point, I think we've only used two clay credits for the enriching of the domains plus enriching of the LinkedIn profiles. Um, then we've got the valid emails. Once we've got the valid emails, then we'll uh, normalize the job title um, by using AI. So this, we'll use GPT. I think we're using GPT-4 mini, 4 mini. That's it. Um, because obviously sometimes if I go back to job role titles, it has like, you know, director of financial reporting and technical accounting. Um, sometimes it could be a bit long um, or it can have like brackets and stuff. So we'll remove it. So here's an example. Uh, if this is run, director of internal audit. All right. Um, so again, you might want to refine this a little bit because sometimes it's not perfect, but it is decent, right, to, to be able to reach out. And then again, I've talked about this in previous, um, in the previous videos, I've done that relatively similar, but um the copy or rather the uh, we use claw to basically scrape the um, job description and then um sorry that's why it's not showing up yeah we use it to scrape the job description and we'll basically pull the requirements that they're mentioning in the job description you mentioned experience within with SaaS, business travel and industry leading tech um and we'll use that in the copy and then this will push the smart lead so that's pretty much the workflow. Again, I've run through this in previous videos um, and it's relatively similar. The only difference here is it's using Google and the only main difference with Google is you get more data because it's pulling more data sources as opposed to just using LinkedIn. Google will pull from LinkedIn plus all the other ones. Um, so you get more access to data, but you will have to use uh, a couple of clay credits in enriching for the domain and enriching for the LinkedIn profile. Um, just so you can filter for recruitment companies and filter those guys out of there. And also you need to obviously find the domain because it doesn't scrape. Um, it doesn't scrape them uh, when you use uh, Adify Google Scraper. It doesn't scrape the company's domain, so you have to enrich for that. So other than that, those are the main credits that you actually end up using. Other than that, if you have your APIs and everything, you don't really need to use anything else. So I hope that's useful. Um, feel free to book in a call if you want us to build out your own like automated clay workflows so you don't have to do any of this stuff manually. We build it out for you one time. And you have all of these templates, all of these workflows within your business that you can then use and leverage without actually having to add headcount, hire a bunch of people or anything. And you basically have technology and AI doing a lot of the work for you for a fraction of the cost. So yeah, feel free to book in a call below and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Cheers.